In this video, we're going to talk about chemical bonds. First of all, what do we call atoms when we're talking about more than one atom stuck together? Well, two or more atoms is a molecule, and if those atoms are different, that molecule can also be called a compound. So, everything here is a molecule, but only these molecules below the line are compounds. So everything bonded to itself is simply a molecule. So you have two hydrogens here, two nitrogens, two oxygens, but this is a single nitrogen and three hydrogens two hydrogens and an oxygen, and if you were talking about more than one water molecule, you would write a number out to the front of that. So just some basics on how we're writing about these molecules. Everything you see on this screen is bonded together. Often, that makes their properties change. Hydrogen and oxygen are gases, but together they make water or hydrogen peroxide, which are very different, and they're liquid at room temperature. Sodium chloride is a crystal that we use to flavor food, but alone, sodium is a metal and chlorine is a poisonous gas we use in bleach. So bonding can really be important. Making and breaking bonds changes the properties of what is in our bodies and how it behaves. There are three types of chemical bonds we're going to discuss. In order of strength, they are covalent, then ionic, then hydrogen. Ionic bonds are the type I like to discuss first. Let's talk about sodium chloride again. And remember that joke from the beginning, taken, not shared? Ionic bonds form when elements gain or lose electrons in order to fill their valence shell. The valence shell is the outermost energy level farthest from the nucleus that contains the electrons that are going to react with other valence shells of other atoms. A full valence shell means a stable molecule one that is much less reactive than atoms with incomplete valence shells. So how do we find out how many electrons are in a valence shell and if it's full or not? Well, hopefully you remember the octet rule from past classes. We're going to place electrons on a Bohr model, one of many atomic models available. It clearly shows the electrons on fixed energy levels. We'll get to a more complex understanding of how electrons really exist according to quantum mechanics, a little later. But according to the octet rule, the first energy level fills with just two electrons, then eight, then eight again. And we're going to need our atomic number to tell us the electron number for these uncharged atoms. So sodium is 11 and chlorine is 17. Filling in our Bohr model of our atom with electrons, you'll see that sodium to fill out that 11th has only one in its outermost valence shell, and chlorine has seven. So sodium needs to lose one electron to be stable, and chlorine needs to gain one. That's a lot easier than gaining or losing seven, right? Reactions are lazy that way. They take the easy route. So once sodium loses this electron, let's see if I can grab it here. Well, I didn't grab the charge. But once it gains that electron, it will be negatively charged, and sodium will become positively charged, because now we've got 10 electrons, and over here we have 18. So more negative than positive, more positive than negative. So these are ions now and they form an ionic bond. Covalent bonds are stronger because instead of trading or giving away an electron and then just having that attraction from the different charges bring the molecule together, covalent bonds involve sharing electrons. So it takes two shared electrons to form one covalent bond. Hydrogen is like 
beautifully made for covalent bonding. It has one electron and it always wants two, so you'll see it as a major part of what builds our bodies. And so there it is, sharing those electrons, and so both hydrogens have a full valence shell. Carbon is another prime candidate for covalent bonding. It has four valence electrons and always wants eight. So instead of trying to gain four or lose four, it's better to share. And so you can see how these would come together and share, forming four covalent bonds. And so that's methane, CH4.